Next to me at the stage here is Shara Tipkin from CNET News. And we have a special guest, Dan Gale with Ultrasense Systems to introduce us to a future free of physical buttons. You brought some good gadgets to show and tell. Let's get into this. What do you mean that there's not gonna be buttons anymore? Well, we've created a new touch user interface using ultrasound. Everybody hears about ultrasound. It's been used to map the depths of the oceans. It's used in sonograms. Uh, it's used up in the, the backup sensors uh, in the bumper of your vehicle. Uh, but nobody has thought to use that as a touch user interface, and that's exactly what we've done here. So the great thing about ultrasound, it can penetrate virtually anything. So our pitch is any material, any material thickness, virtually. <laughs> uh, and where we're going to see that first is in uh, 5G phones. Uh, 5G phones, uh, the industrial design is going to change. And the reason why is to get that super high bandwidth of data, there has to be a lot of antenna inside the phone. And those antenna have to be located under the glass. So what you're going to see going forward, and we're already starting to see this in China, complete four-sided waterfall displays. So what do you mean by that, waterfall display? Waterfall display meaning either 50% or in even some cases 100% of the glass of the display going all the way over the side. And then there's no room for buttons if you have a glass on Ex the sides. Exactly. Okay. No room for mechanical buttons. So with our demo here, we've actually replaced the mechanical buttons uh, with our ultrasound sensors. And we've, uh, you know, that can be directly interfaced to a haptic, so you don't have to look down at the phone to, to feel where you're at. You get the haptic feedback. And the smart industrial designers will, will do the rest as to where to guide your finger. You, so explain for us how this actually is working. What, is, what do the ultrasounds do? Well, first we have, uh, we, we've created the world's smallest ultrasound sensor on a chip. And if you uh, get a close-in shot of this, That's it's really uh, itty super, super tiny. <laughs> <laughs> and it's upside down. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, really 1.4 by 2.6 millimeters. So it's about the, the tip Here. of a pinhead. Yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah. there it is. Mm -hmm. And it's so tiny that it can be placed virtually anywhere. Uh, the integration is very easy. It's just basically gluing it to the underside of the surface material. And, and you have a demo of that with, with wood as well here. Well, like and it can be not only for replacing buttons, but uh, it can actually go under other types of material. Like so you wood. have that tiny sensor underneath that, that slab of wood. Exactly. This is uh, seven millimeters of wood. And you can see the LED here when I press. You can see that it triggers. Yeah, yeah, Shara, sure. just show that off. Does it feel like anything? Yeah, I mean, you can feel like a haptic feedback. You know, like when you're typing on your phone with the, the keys, you sometimes feel, you know, yeah. kind of like a little buzz feeling almost. Mm -hmm. It's the same sort of thing. So when you're, when you're pushing over here, there's nothing. It's just wood. But then when you're pressing where that virtual button is, you're really feeling the uh, haptic feedback. And it's just, yeah, a little bit of a, huh. can you reach yeah, it? Yeah, I definitely want to try that. <laughs> So we can go through you know, virtually any yeah, material, like little aluminum, little stainless press. steel, uh, wood, ceramic, glass. Well, you go through, glass. Th through ceramic, so like my bathroom tiles, I can just start like, <laughs> ha like programming things. You can do that. So uh, how, how, how thick can it penetrate? Like well is it, it only, yeah. yeah. It's really a function of power. So we designed uh, this first tiny sensor to go into smartphones. And with that, uh, we're looking at about five millimeters uh, maximum th thickness you know, through aluminum or through glass or plastic. Uh, but we have uh, other sensors that you, know, you get enough power, it can go through you know, two inches of solid aluminum. So it's really just a function of, of you power. You have a steering wheel over there. I have a steering wheel. So what I want to show is the, the steering wheel of the future. Okay. So we're really seeing a lot of traction in the automotive space today. Uh, and the reason why it is, is shared mobility is, is on the rise. You mean um, like sharing cars? Shared cars, absolutely. Yeah. So an owned vehicle is only utilized about 5% of the time because otherwise it's sitting in a driveway or a parking lot. A shared vehicle, though, is used about 20 to 25% of the time. And so there's a lot more wear and tear on the vehicle. And we're seeing the trend go to about 50% utilization over the next five years. So with that much wear and tear, the mechanical button is going to wear out a lot faster, but it's also going to get very dirty uh, with so many people using the vehicle. And with granny. mechanical buttons, <laughs> you have all the nooks and crannies where dirt and bacteria can hide. So automotive makers are looking for new ways of being able to counter that, and that's with solid state materials. 
So what I have here is uh, the steering wheel of the future. We have our sensors under about three millimeters of solid aluminum. And you know, I can just simply you know, press through the, the different menus. I can go and select with a simple press. Uh, and, and we're looking at your interface right now as you're doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. So we're not just a tiny sensor, but we're really a multifunctional. Way to go, Shower playing music. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, does, that will play music, actually. So, uh, hey, it's a real working demo. <laughs> it's a real working demo. Only the best. But it is a multifunctional user interface. So it's not just replacing a mechanical button, but you could put it on the backside of the phone as a selfie button. So you could tap it once, and you could take the picture. You could tap it twice. It could go into video mode. Uh, press and hold, zoom in, zoom out, do the multiple taps, and you could go into the different photo filters. No need to do different, you know, use different hands to go into the ap actual application and pinch and scroll and, and that sort of thing. That's but this isn't, I mean, where we've heard of ultrasonic before is with the new fingerprint readers that we're seeing below uh, screens, like in the new Galaxy, Samsung Galaxy devices. Yep. This isn't that. This isn't that at all. So what we do is we transmit an, an ultrasound beam through the material, and it's highly localized. It doesn't propagate side to side. So if you're handling you know, your phone or another gadget, it's not going to false trigger. So that's one thing we wanted to come up with is a UI, a user interface that doesn't false trigger. And does it know the difference if it's like brushing up against my sleeve versus me touching it? Yeah, so sound travels through materials at different rates. So we can actually detect some of the different input materials. So if you have this in your pocket, we know that you know, not to trigger at that time. What about uh, waterproofing or water, things like that? How does this impact that? Yeah, so with this technology, we've come up with something that we call 3D ultrasound. And with 3D ultrasound, uh, you can actually do water rejection as well as you can wear a, a thick, heavy ski glove like this and still be able to detect that. So we've uh, combined the pure ultrasound technology with uh, what we call ZD or Z-Force sensing. Uh, all in that little tiny device that you see here. Okay, so this sensor is constantly sending out a signal, looking for an interruption with my skin, but is that gonna drain batteries in the future if this is in the phone? So, you know, part of the secret sauce here is the way we designed it to be super low power. And so in a always on mode, we're at 20 microamps, if that means anything to anybody. Does but not, no. Uh, <laughs> basically, your phone, when it's off, is consuming about 100 microamps of power, even in the off state. We only consume 20 microamps, so wow. we're much lower than that. So we sip that. Is that per day or like per life of the? Just in an always on state. Always on, okay. Yep. Now, I mean, when are we gonna see something like this? Does it take a while to like actually end up in our phones? No, uh, <laughs> our <laughs> young company, we're about 18 months old and we've done a lot in a very short period of time. So we've been sampling now for about the last 10 months. And we do have uh, designing with major smartphone makers today. So we will see phones on the market second half of this year. And uh, we're also being designed into uh, appliances. And over the next year or so, we hope to be in automobiles as well. Can you say which phones of we're going to see this? <laughs> <laughs> is it, I mean, is it going to be like a mainstream phone that people would buy? Or is it going to be kind of an experimental version? No, for uh, you know, 5G is moving very quickly. And as I said, you know, the industrial design is going to you know, change, you know, quite drastically here in the very short term. And there really hasn't been a good solution out there to be able to replace the mechanical buttons. And, you know, we were quite surprised ourselves. We thought there would be an education, you know, a learning curve process. And, you know, the smartphone makers have been trying to replace mechanical buttons for about the last two to three years. And so when we walked in, they said, oh, you've solved all the <laughs> problems. So it's been uh, quite a ride over the last uh, 10 months or so. Do you see all of them? So like with this, when you push it, you feel the, the sort of haptic feedback. Is that what most are probably going to do? Or is there going to be some sort of indication to know, hey, there's a button here, even though you don't see a button? Well, the, the human mind is pretty amazing. And we, we move very quickly from Blackberries to tap, you know, tapping on the, the screen. So uh, here will always be tied with a haptic. And you know, there's already the haptic in the phone, so it's just but a. Is there haptic interface. in the car as much? You know, like like it becomes a distraction. We have to relearn what I'm pressing and Good everything. Question. It's coming very quickly. Everything that you see in the vehicle today, the feedback is haptic, okay. and so that uh, train has already left the station. And there's many big companies out there adopting the haptics in the automotive today. So you know, we're uh, you know, the industrial designers will do the rest with maybe roughening the surface or something to make it just very. 
uh, user-friendly to be able to find that button. So are there any scenarios where it doesn't work? So you said gloves, water, but if you have a lot of lotion on your hands, would it not, no, not realize uh, it? Or? It, it even yeah. works for that as well. <laughs> Uh, we designed the ultrasound signal to dissipate in air. So, you know, we are really transmitting through the solid state material. Uh, so if there's air gaps, uh, you know, we're probably not the right solution for that, but we do have other alternatives as well. So, I mean, explain a little bit more what you mean by air gaps. So just your finger just kind of needs to be flush or like explain that a little more. Exactly. Um, you know, you just, it's a touch user interface. So what we're looking for is a change in the acoustic impedance at the surface level, if anybody knows what that means. <laughs> <laughs> so the signal will get absorbed by your finger and some of that will be reflected back down into the sensor. And you know, based on that reflection, we see different contrasts and we can determine a light, medium, or heavy touch. So is this something that's really expensive to implement or what, you know, is this gonna make our phones more expensive? Uh, actually not. You know, we're on par with uh, the mechanical buttons today. Uh, with how much they cost? Yeah, with how much they cost today. You know, a mechanical button is actually very sophisticated here. You know, it's not just uh, a piece of plastic. Uh, there's a lot that goes into that. Uh, there's the cutout of the case, which is very expensive. And then the waterproofing uh, is the majority uh, of the cost there. So without having to put a hole in the case and without having to waterproof, you know, we're on par with uh, a mechanical button today, not only in the phone, but also in the, in the car. I can't help but think about if there's no worry about the button manufacturing, if suddenly I can start programming where I want to touch and you have sensors all around the edges and I can program different things or even gaming applications. Exactly, so you know, it has been adopting as uh, what they call air triggers uh, mm -hmm. using different mm -hmm. technologies, but those technologies uh, are prone to false positives. So if you twist the phone, uh, and create a strain, they, they actually false trigger. With our technology, it, it won't do that. So you will see more and more, you know, gaming is, you know, is finally taking off in phones with uh, Fortnite and other things. And, and 5G is really gonna help that with the high bandwidth going forward. So we will see more and more sensors being put into the edge of the phone. Are you talking with appliance makers? I mean, like, like or is this right now first phones, then cars, then more? Well, uh, there's only one person one other person on the sales team today, so, uh, <laughs> but we've covered a, a lot of territory, and the appliance makers are, are very interested in this, as well as the automotive makers. And, and the reason why is, you know, they want uh, a user interface to be agno agnostic off across all materials. So in the entry level model, if they're using a different material in the premium model, they want that same user interface to be the same, but the materials will be different. And in an appliance as well. So. A stainless steel refrigerator may be sold in the U.S., but a glass refrigerator may be sold in Japan and a plastic one sold in China, mm -hmm. uh, all using various thicknesses of materials. So they are looking for a one-size-fits-all user interface going forward because it's part of their branding. Is there something that it doesn't work well as through, like in terms of materials? Is like one material better than another? No, it's, uh, again, with anything, it's, uh, it's a function of power. And so mm -hmm. some may require a little bit more power than the other, but all of our algorithms run with inside the chip and we have the, the knobs to turn to be able to make that happen. This is very fascinating. Thank you right. so much for coming by and showing us what we'll probably be talking about at next CES, seen inside a gadget. So thank you. Absolutely, thank you for having me.